Hi, my name is James Shepard with North American Bank Card. <clears throat> this video is going to be about uh, installing credit card terminals. And uh, it's going to be pretty specific to North American Bank Card. So if you haven't signed up with North American Bank Card, let me encourage you to give me a call, 814-515-9526. And if you have signed up with North American Bank Card, <clears throat> let me encourage you to get a piece of paper and a pen. I'm going to go pretty fast, and you're, you might want to take a few notes. I'm going to go through the terminals. So I'm going to get right into it. Um, first of all, when you're doing when you're installing a credit card terminal, the first thing that you need to know is whether or not the terminal is going to be first data or global. Now with North American Bank Card, you are able to board merchants, meaning the application you fill out and you submit is either to a first data platform or a global platform. Now a platform, uh, when, they, when you hear that, is basically like an operating system for a credit card terminal. On your computer, you either have Windows or you have Mac. Those are operating systems, but they're different. They work on many different types of computers, but they're different. Some computers will only work with a Mac. Some computers will not work with a Mac. They'll only work with Windows. And that's the way that credit card terminals are as well. Um, so there are the two different platforms are First Data and Global. Now, uh, First Data, uh, I'm going to show you this machine right here if you can see it. Uh, this machine, you can see it has FD100 written on the front of it. And uh, FD stands for First Data. There's an FD50 which is their uh, real basic model. There's an FD100, which just runs credit cards, and also you can hook up uh, the FD10 pin pad to it. Then there's the FD200. That terminal has uh, a check imager, um, check scanner on the side of it that runs checks through it. Um, those are the main three that you're going to see. There's also some uh, wireless uh, first data terminals. Now, the only ones that North American Bank Card does not support it does not support first data wireless terminals. Um, a wireless terminal looks something like this. You can see that's a pretty small terminal. This one here is a Verifone VX670 terminal. And uh, this particular uh, terminal, it's wireless, so it has its own cell phone service within the terminal. Uh, it costs $15 a month for the merchant to have uh, the, the wireless terminal. And there's also a surcharge of $0.05 cents per transaction if they want to have that terminal. Um, now, you can provide them with a free wireless terminal, but the terminal uh, has to be on a global platform. It has to be like this uh, VX670. That's the one that they provide for free. Uh, you can also do a Nareet 8020 terminal. Now, the thing that you have to be careful about is this. There are wireless credit card terminals that are used only on Wi-Fi connections. You do not want to mess with those. Um, and they don't really serve the purpose for most of your clients. The reason that you set up a wireless terminal is normally for two things. Either it's like a pizza shop where they go out and deliver and it helps their delivery guy to be able to have a credit card terminal. It makes the business look really classy. Um, and also their rates are a little uh, lower uh, as far as the percentages because the cards are swiped instead of being taken over the phone. Of course, that's made up for by the additional five cent per transaction surcharge. Um, but either way, a lot of pizza shops like to have those for at least one or two of them to have their delivery people with a machine. So for those, they have to have uh, that terminal that's got the $15 a month wireless uh, service, just like a cell phone service, so it can dial out the transaction when they're out in the field. The other purpose would be if they take their uh, retail items to a trade show. A lot of merchants go to trade shows and they need a wireless terminal. So um, anyway, if they need that, it has to be through global, so it has to be one of either the Nareet 8020 or the uh, VX670. There might be a few others that work. Those are the only two that I personally work with. And if you provide a free wireless terminal, you can provide the VX670, and uh, you get a $100 bonus once they activate that new account. So if you have a merchant, you already got paid $200 on that merchant. Um, you can still sell them an additional. It's a separate account that you set up for the wireless terminal, it's a totally separate account, same address, same EIN number, same bank account and all that, but it's a separate merchant ID number for the wireless terminal, the VX670, and you get an additional $100 once they activate that account. Um, so that's your wireless terminals, but we cannot do wireless first data terminals. Now, uh, what I personally do is this. If it's not an FD terminal, meaning it's not an FD100 or whatever, um, the only other merchant that we set up on a first data platform would be 
if it is a petroleum merchant, meaning it's a gas station. If it's a gas station and they take Voyager or they take um, you know, any of these uh, different fleet cards, if they take fleet cards or they're a petroleum merchant, they have to be on a first data platform because they're going to be on what's called bypass. Um, bypass is uh, the network that petroleum companies process their credit card transactions over. So if you have a petroleum merchant, it has to be first data. I still use the VX510, which is this terminal right here. This is the most common terminal that I use. If I'm going to get a free terminal from uh, a North American bank card, it's going to be a Verifone VX510. That's the one that I like. That's the one I'm very much used to. And also, it's very simple, and it does a few things that are great. And I will tell you about those in a minute. Um, but if it's a petroleum merchant, you can do a first data platform in a VX510 or a VX570 just like you can do it on an FD terminal. But the FD terminals have to be first data. No matter what type of merchant it is, if you're going to use an FD terminal, it has to be first data. Most of the other terminals you deal with can be on either first data or global. I always board them on global. Uh, the reason why is because the customer support and the options available through global payments is better with North American Bank Card because that's their main processor that they use. Their main processor is global. So you want to board most of your merchants on global and reprogram them that way. But if you have a petroleum merchant or if you have a merchant with an FD terminal, you're going to have to board those as a first data client. Now it's very important that you know if they're going to be first data or global before you have them complete the application because even though it's with North American Bank Card, uh, there's different applications. So you need to bring different paperwork with you if they're going to be first data versus being global. Again, that's another reason why I always do global unless I have to do first data. That way I always have paperwork ready to go. And then if it's a rare case where it has to be first data, then I make it first data. Um, now the second thing that you need to know is whether they're going to be hooked up to a phone line or whether they're going to be hooked up to an Ethernet cable, meaning over the Internet. Um, now, uh, there are certain terminals, for instance, uh, this terminal here, um, this is a Hypercom T4210. The Hypercom T4210, if we look on the back of the terminal, there's different ports. It does not have a port for an Ethernet cable. Um, it just does not have one. And so uh, because of that, it has to be on a phone line. There are other terminals like the VX510, which I have right here, that on the back of this terminal, if we look in here, there is one that says uh, 10 base T. If it says 10 base T on the back, um, usually it'll have a uh, metal lining around it. That's your ethernet cable base. Um, that terminal can take an internet connection or it can take a phone line connection. Now a couple things to understand about that. If the terminal is set up to run over the internet, it's going to do two things. Number one, their transaction fee will go from eight cents to three cents. That's what you have to price it at. Now you can price it however you want, you can mark it up, but what you have to price it at in order to get your bonus is three cents if it's on an internet and eight cents if it's over a phone line. Also, if they process their transactions over the internet, they approve in approximately one to two seconds. If they process over a phone line, it's normally 10 to 30 seconds. That makes an enormous difference for a place where they have a line. If you go into a business where a pizza place or a restaurant where they have a line of people, uh, busy retail shops, they will save a lot of time and a lot of money if they have it over the internet for two reasons. Number one, their transaction fee will be lower. Number two, it will process immediately. As soon as they swipe the card, boom, it's approved or it's declined right away so they can move to the next person in the line. That's very important to remember as well. Um, so that's internet or phone. You need to understand what you're going to do there. Now, many, many times you'll go to a merchant location and they already have a internet service there hooked up to their computer, but they do not yet have it hooked up to their credit card terminal. This is a chance for you to really show your knowledge for you to get a sale. Okay? These terminals usually only take a phone line. Uh, might be a Nareet 2085 terminal. That's another common terminal. I don't have one here with me today, but that terminal is very common. It only takes a phone line. It might be a Hypercom T4210 like I just showed you. Only takes a phone line. And what you can do is you can say, hey, I'll provide you with a free terminal 
going on to free merchant placement. You can provide them with a free VX510 or VX570 terminal. Say, I'm going to provide you with a free terminal, and if they already have a wireless modem there, you can simply, if they have, as long as they have one extra port, you can run a Ethernet cable from that port over to your credit card terminal. You're going to save them five cents on every transaction. That's a lot of money, especially if they do a lot of transactions every month. They're going to save a lot of money, and it's going to be so much faster um, for them to process their transactions. So first of all, you need to know if it's going to be first data or it's going to be global. You need to decide that. Secondly, you need to figure out if you're going to be hooking it up to a phone line or if you're going to be hooking it up to an Ethernet cable. Lastly, in this video, you need to know if, a, if it's going to be on a phone line or if it's not going to be on a phone line. Either way, you need to know if they have a dedicated phone line at their business. In other words, do they have one line or do they have multiple lines in their business? And if they have multiple lines, is it a dedicated line? Just ask the merchant, they'll know. If you say, do you have a dedicated phone line or do you just have the one line? If they have a dedicated phone line for their fax machine, you can use that line when you do the reprogram. All reprograms must be done over the phone line. They cannot be done over the internet. I hate that. It's very aggravating. It's very slow. But that's reality. That's the way it is. You have to do reprograms over a phone line. And if you get a phone call, on that line in the midst of a reprogram it will kill the download and that is going to be a very time consuming problem for you and very aggravating for the merchant so you need to find out if they have a dedicated line. Now before I go on to the next video and talk about my procedures for doing the downloads and doing the installations I want to make uh, one sales application here when you're selling let me give you a tip when in doubt make the sale and figure out the download later you always have at your disposal the free merchant placement. So if worse comes to worse, you can always provide them with a free terminal. So if you look at the terminal and you think, man, I have no idea what that terminal is, I don't know if that should be first data or if that should be global or whatever, go ahead and get the sale, put it on global, price it at eight cents uh, per transaction, and just tell the merchant, say, you know what, we should have no problem uh, doing a reprogram on that terminal for you, but if we did, I would just go ahead and upgrade it for you and give you a free terminal, you know, at no cost to you at all. So you can always do that. So although some of the stuff I'm talking about right now is sounding really complicated, especially if you haven't done very many reprograms or if you've never worked with different platforms, don't let it scare you. Uh, tech support will figure all of this out for you. Your ISO support rep will figure all of this out for you. I can help you figure all this out. But when you're in the business, don't lose the sale because you don't know what you're doing with the equipment. Um, listen to these videos carefully, take notes, but when it comes right down to it, just sell the merchant. You have 60 days to do the installation after you make the sale before North American Bank Card wants its bonus back. So just don't worry about it. The merchant's not going to be in any big hurry because they already have a terminal and you know they're not going to be in any big rush. So don't worry about that. Don't sweat the details. Get the sale. And if nothing else, on the application, if you don't even know what type of terminal, just put down it as a VX570 dual com in the free mer in, uh, as free merchant placement or just put down a VX570 dual com and you're going to reprogram it. And then you can always call later and change the file. They can change the type of uh, terminal that you're going to use. They can change all that stuff. That stuff's all subject to change very easily. No big deal. Don't sweat the details. If you get confused, make the sale and then we will worry together about how to actually do the install after you've made the sale and got the paperwork filled out. That's part one. Watch part two for my procedures on actually doing the installs.